Greetings programs, Neo Mega Man back again for part 19 of Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Lily's Path. Well, last time was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Sorry about the short episode, but I figured to save some headache in editing, I'd just go ahead and cut it off there. As for now, we're on to the momentary present. And as of this moment, we're in a mad dash for the end. The first end, anyway. So, let's continue. After a chaotic dash to the station and finding our seats in the otherwise deserted carriage, we promptly crashed. Looking at the time, close to midnight, it's a little surprised that few take this particular train. Hanako is fast asleep on Lily's shoulder, and I can only barely muster the energy to stay awake. The excitement we had a while ago probably didn't help. <laughs> I'd probably be pretty depressed about going back to school if my brain was actually working. As it is, though, the sight of the nighttime scenery scrolling by is surprisingly beautiful. My loud yawn is nearly wholly drowned out by the clacking of the train tracks and the old carriages rattling. So tired. And whose fault is that, he's out? She really does toe the line between insulting and amusing sometimes. Though I managed to wring out a weary smile. I look back out the window, my reflection just visible on the clear pane. Truth be told, she's perfectly correct. If it weren't for that little interlude a few hours ago, both of us would have a lot more energy. On top of that, we both had another had to take another bath, very nearly making us late for the train's departure. Yeah, yeah, it was mine. Still, getting into the bath with a guy is a dangerous thing to do. Evidently. Sorry. I guess I kind of took advantage of the situation back there. Well, I didn't exactly hate it. As she trails off, I look back to her. My eyes narrow as I see her slightly reddened cheeks and small grin, her mind obviously elsewhere. Say it. I knew the possibility of it happening was there. I knew it. You're just as dirty-minded as I am. <clears throat> she quickly coughs into her free hand, making her disapproval crystal clear. <laughs> That's a rather crude way of putting it. Oh, and you would suggest? I merely have a healthy adolescent sex drive. So in other words, dirty-minded. Almost seeming to sense the moment... Monica mumbles quietly as she furrows her brow in Lily's lap. Lily's look of disapproval melts away as she gently smiles and strokes her hand on Hanako's long, dark hair. All I can do is watch. Watch and smile. If someone were to ask me when I fell in love with her, I wouldn't be able to answer. The best I'd be able to come up with is, it just happened at some point, but I didn't realize it. If someone were to ask me why I love her, though, I could answer much more easily. You really love Hanako, don't you? She gives a deep nod, smiling warmly. It's a pity we have to return to school. She seemed to relax so much while we were all away. This decision gate. This decision gate does not matter in the overall scheme of things. You can talk about either one. I'd suggest talking about Hanako. I wouldn't worry. Hanako's been gaining confidence thanks to you, at least for as long as I've known you two. She gives a self-deprecating -de sigh. I think I merely provided her with company and support. Since she came to know you, she's opened up much more, even to me. I get the feeling she's understating her influence on Hanako, especially given that before the two came to know each other, Hanako had no friends to speak of. The friends I'd had in my previous school fulfilled what I'd expected of them, for the most part simply being there for idle chatter. But in Hanako and Lily, there really feels to be more to their relationship. A part of me envies it, but another can't ignore the fact that the school year will eventually end. After graduation, I really have no idea what Hanako will do. This trip has shown me just how much we've all come to depend on one another. Indeed, we're all going to have to make decisions. Maybe that's the reason why, despite our return to school also heralding a return to normalcy of everyday life, I can't help feeling a little restless. 
On the bright side, it won't take long for the summer holidays to arrive after our exams are finished. We can come back here during the summer holidays if we want. For a moment, she thinks on the notion, her face becoming somewhat distant. I can only guess she's reflecting on all that's happened here. That would be good, I think. I nod approvingly, smiling at her. Summer, together with Lily. The idea seems like the perfect way to spend our holiday. And with that, folks, we move into Act 4. Future. I'm going to keep going, because that's really not enough to stop. After the excitement of our trip to Hokkaido, it seems strange to be right back to the usual daily routine so soon. Indeed, it feels like a normal day, the same as any other. Well, that's what I'd like to think, anyway. To tell the truth, the atmosphere of the cla entire class, no, the entire school, has changed. While an undercurrent of subdued trepidation had previously pervaded the class, now that the exams are in sight, it boiled over into frantic studying, rarely seen otherwise. One day until exams start. It's horrific, really. Then, instead of studying, we went and wasted our time north. We were such model students, too. Glancing around the class, even the bubbly, ever-energetic Misha seems oddly deflated. She sits at her desk, nervously chewing a pen, while Muto lectures in front of the class. Wait. On closer inspection, I, or inspection, I do believe she's eating it. Tearing my eyes from the sorry spectacle, I turn my attention elsewhere. Hanako sits frantically scribbling in her notebook, her face mere inches away from the page, seemingly trying to record every word that leaves Muto's mouth. Shizune's... well, Shizune. Cool as a cucumber, she sits diligently taking notes with her attention wholly focused on the front of the class. Truth be told, it's what I should be doing as well, if not for the fact that I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what's being covered already. I wonder how Lily's doing. While she does have a good head on her, she has plenty on her plate, unlike me. Her class rep duties, taking care of Hanako, her other social contacts, her extra English studies. Boy, that girl does take on a lot. The lunchtime bell breathes or bleh, the lunchtime bell brings a sigh of relief from the entire class, Muto being no exception. I get the feeling he much prefers the more laid back atmosphere of his normal classes to the frantic pace of exam prep that we're subjected to right now. Hey Chan Help me I lower my eyelids to half mast, making clear my intention of doing quite the opposite. Help me, help me, help me Not going well? Shi Chen's gonna be fine, but I think I might die. Am I gonna die, He Chen? Will you let me die from all this work? How maudlin. Given that she's neither the brightest student in the class nor the most diligent, it isn't a great surprise that she's finding it hard to cope with the workload. Sorry, Misha, but I got my own work to do. I thought you and Shizune would be studying together over the long weekend anyway. Studying's too boring to waste a holiday on, He Chen. Shopping together was much more fun, wasn't it, Shi Chen? It's only now that I realize Shizuni's been looking over to us and that Misha's arms have been moving mo likely all this time. I must really be zoned out not to have noticed. What is it with girls in shopping, anyway? Even Lily and Hanako have dragged me out with them a couple times. But you went anyway? It's so rare to see a guy that likes going shopping. Well, my role would probably be best described as pack mule. I can't say I share your enthusiasm about the experience. Back to the exams. You studied after you got back from the days off, didn't you, Shizune? Of course, Ichan. It's only sensible to study in the days before. Erg. <laughs> Misha makes a sound vaguely similar to a dying cow as she realizes her folly and unceremoniously flops onto her desk, betrayed even by her best friend. Judging from Shizune's quite frustrated look at Misha, she probably told her to study as she did. Don't worry. You can still gain some marks if you start studying now. Maybe. Misha does not seem overly amused. It seems the bubbly balloon of everlasting cheerfulness has been cruelly popped. Shizune's signing goes unnoticed by the mobbing Misha, earning her a quick poke in the shoulder. It takes barely for a moment for Misha to get back into form. Ah, so what did you do over the weekend, Nichan? Just took a trip up north with Lily and Hanako. It was pretty nice. I see both of them narrowing their eyes at me, their minds surely in the gutter. 
The fact that their suspicions are founded makes the situation all the more awkward. We just studied and went sightseeing. There's nothing more to it. Hmm. After such a flagrant lie, I realized that it might not have been the best step. Considering Shizune's connections and her total lack of restraint when it comes to questioning someone she suspects of telling untruths. I really have no idea how she's going to take it. But she'll find out eventually anyway. It is... It isn't as if it's really her business whom I date in any case. And yes, Lily and I are going out now. While Misha receives the news with an enthusiastic smile, Shizune gives you a look of mild surprise, somewhat masked by her cool demeanor. Whoever your date is, your business. I hope you two go well together. Misha gives a look that says this is the most quarter I could possibly receive on the matter. It's all I wanted, really. After she says this, though, Shizune begins to sign something else and stops herself and shakes her head at Misha to prevent her from translating. Normally, I think this is strange enough, but the awkwardly casual wave Shizune gives before walking off with Misha in tow adds to my confusion. Shizune is hardly the kind of person to pull a punch or communicate without forethought. I shrug my shoulders at the duo's odd behavior and look towards Hanako's desk, but see that her chair is empty. She was definitely here before, so I guess she didn't just feel like waiting. I'll go grab some food alone, then. Walking down the hallway to the unused room that's become a second home to three students in particular, I mournfully look down at the plastic wrap plastic wrapped salad roll and juice box in my hand. The cafeteria's food is really unappetizing. Maybe I'll consider this my penance for my reason and discretions. Opening the door, I notice one less quiet figure than I'd expected. It's strange. Despite having known Lily for months, I can't help thinking back to the very first time I opened this door and saw her silently sitting in the sunlight. Just as she did then, she slowly opens her eyes, unmoving as they are, and calmly addresses them. Good morning, Hiso. It's afternoon, I think. Has Hanako been around? She skittered out of class without me even noticing. Lily cradles her cheek thoughtfully as I take a seat, my bag taking its place against the closest leg of the table, and my unsatisfying meal neatly set out in front of me. She did appear, for a time... She said she had to study for the upcoming exams and left for the library. We find ourselves not entirely believing her words. Well, at least her intentions are in the right place. She is sweet, but she needn't go this far to let us have our space. I might talk to her about it sometime. Probably for the best. For a while, we quietly eat our meals, Lily elegantly nibbling on her sandwiches and sipping her tea as I eat what tastes like a garden sandwich in dried dough. The atmosphere feels slightly strained, neither of us knowing quite what to say to each other now that our small talk has dried up. Eventually, we both finish our food with no conversation forthcoming for quite some time. Eventually, though, Lily's soft voice breaks the silence. A lot happened back there, didn't it? Hmm. Again, silence. With both our minds on the same topic, though, I think I have my feelings on, on that sorted out. I know everything happened in kind of a hurry, but I don't regret anything that happened in Hokkaido. Not one thing. Isa? Slightly tense, I take her hands in mine, have to feel her, have to settle my own nerves. I stand by my words back there, Lily. I love you, and I won't leave you. I only wish for you to think the same. She silently reflects for a long time, which feels like an eternity. Her reverie comes to an end as she takes one hand from mine, placing it over them as she leans her body forward and stands out of her chair. After a moment's hesitation, her face slightly pensive, her lips meet mine for a brief moment. My mind feels as if it briefly stopped at that moment, barely registering Lily sitting back in her chair and smiling back at me with ever so slightly reddened cheeks. Hearing that makes me very happy, Hiso. I would be glad to stay with you. Maybe it would be good to slow things down a bit compared to before. We still have school, after all, and our exams. She gives a mischievous giggle, which proves to be contagious. That might be a good idea, indeed. Do you think you'll fare well in your exams? It's only one day until they arrive, as you say. I probably should have studied more, but I think I've got a good enough head to, sh to manage. That said, I had to bat off Misha and Shizune. Is your class worried, as worried about the exams as mine? She lets out an exasperated sigh, all but confirming it. I'm thankful for the atmosphere becoming a bit lighter. 
I think so. I've already been asked for help by two of my classmates, and there will no doubt be more. Think of it as your first training in being a teacher, maybe? That's probably a good way to think of it. On that note, how are you faring in your English studies? I remember it was far from your strongest subject, and the few sentences you memorized to speak from my mother aren't likely to help. Damn. Right on the mark. You got me. If you don't mind, would you be able to help me possibly in that regard? Please? It'd be my pleasure to he help you, Hisao. But in exchange... She lowers her eyebrows at me, her coquettish nature tended to be coming to the floor. No problem at all. You'd probably be better off with some help in your studies, though. She beams a smile at me, one of girlish victory that nearly makes me blush. I get the feeling she's aware of how, use, or of how to use her face to twist my judgment, so I should probably be more on guard. Here and now, though, a study group seems like an expedient way of both of us to show an expedient way for both of us to shore up our more lacking skills. Pleh. The school bell rings out, reminding us the time isn't going to stand still. God damn it. Huh. Lunch time's over already. Sure is easy to lose track of time here. This room's so far from the other clubs and activities, not much sound can reach us. That's probably most of the reason why. A place far from all the others, alone with just one person whom she loves. As Lily stands and collects her bag and cane, my thoughts are cast back to the time we spent in Hokkaido. Yep. Ah, before I go, Akira and I are having a homecoming party in my room tomorrow. Will you be able to come? And back again. My schedule's free, so I should be able to make enough room in my study time to make it. Good to hear, Hisa. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're back from Scotland. Once exams are over, we should have more time to ourselves. Hmm. Holidays start soon after, too. We can start the holidays with Tanabata, then, just as we promised at the school festival. She brings her hand to her cheek and laughs slightly nervously, recalling the event as I silently thank myself for managing to remember. It seems odd to see her react in such a way, though it's not like I never saw her embarrassed before. I'd better be going. Farewell, Hisa. Bye. Whether it's just out of habit or just a stubborn desire for one small fragment of normality, I hold up a hand in farewell just as I always do. At least I'm consciously aware that I'm doing it now. I think I'm beginning to see a bigger picture than I ever have before. Not only with Lily, but also my life ahead. The chains of my past are finally breaking. Eighteen minutes. Yeah. If I remember correctly, this is going to be something of a lengthy scene, so... I think... I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here, folks. Perhaps slightly shorter than we're used to, but... Uh, you know. I'm trying to get back in the swing of recording these things, too. Okay. So... That's enough out of me. Uh, yeah, tune in next time for part 20 of Katawa Shoujo Lily's Path when we start making our way to the first ending. Yep. This is your host, Neo Mega Man, signing out. End of line.